Hi, and welcome to Audio and Acoustics with Norman Varney. Today we're going to talk about big picture versus big sound. With the 4K resolution and powerfully bright projectors available these days, it's easy to have a big picture look good. But can you have too big a picture? Yes. One, I've seen screens where you can't see the whole image without scanning the picture or even having to tilt your head. This is not the way it was produced. Two, too big a picture means the front uh, loudspeakers are going to have to be pushed too far apart for a good proper image or they're going to have to be placed behind uh, an acoustically transparent screen which introduces its own compromises. Let's go back to the silent movie era to see how important audio is to the picture. When silent movies first appeared, the reception was rather perplexing. Without any audible cues, the audience didn't know whether to laugh or cry when the villain got hit over the head with a chair. Straight away, music was incorporated to set the mood and help guide the audience, usually with an organist. Silent movies were our first clue as to how important audio is to the storytelling. Then came pictureless talkies. People would sit close to a big wireless wooden box from which programs of adventure, comedy, drama, horror, mystery, romance, thrillers, and musical variety emerged. This was known as the golden age of radio. When such programs were broadcasted, listeners were required to use their imagination to fill in the blank screen. The storytelling and the sound effects were enough to trigger our imagination to create images in our mind that were more persuasive than by any other means. The audio grabbed your attention and got your heart racing far greater than silent movies or reading books because there was more human elements involved. Radio proved to us the importance of audio over picture. Hearing can tell you more about the environment around you than any of our other sen senses. It can tell you things happening in the dark, uh, behind you, even miles away like an approaching thunderstorm. A low growl behind you will, get, will quickly get your undivided attention. Our brain categorizes the sound and estimates its size and distance in less than 50 milliseconds, much faster than we process vision. Based on the information collected, the brain then concludes via experience and intelligence the type and level of threat that the sound is, and then determines whether we should fight, flee, or freeze. Sound triggers our emotions. Sound can influence our moods of anger, fright, melancholy, happiness, sadness, uh, etc. In cinema, sound can offer more clues, more data uh, about the story, the environment, the mood, than can visual. Uh, sound incorporates more of our internal memory data, resulting in uh, our emotional feelings and, and reactions. Um, neurotransmitters of dopamine and serotonin and, and uh, adrenaline, etc., are regulated by our, our memory bank. When watching a movie, the brain is typically more active processing sounds than it is processing sight. Though we capture sound binaurally, we hear three-dimensionally. That's why it's so important that the audio and the video equipment be set up properly to allow us to optimally collect the data and to reproduce it as it was produced. So you can have big sound and small picture and be much more captivated than with big picture and small sound. But it's best to have the proper balance of the two. So in conclusion, be sure that the audio is optimized for the room first and then size and locate the screen accordingly. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to this channel if you're interested in more short videos about audio and acoustics. Thank you.